probably not a week goes by that someone in the internet world reaches out to me and says, you're so different, what's changed? They asked me about my energy. They asked me about the way that I post, about the things that I speak about. And they want to know where the change came from or they want to acknowledge the change or whatever the case. And I thought maybe it was time to kind of talk about the change and what went into it. And, you know, for me, you know, a lot of you know that uh, a couple years ago, I was sued by Entrepreneur Media, also known as Entrepreneur Magazine, for using the word entrepreneur. And how that came about was I filed for a trademark for my brand, which at the time was Unstoppable Entrepreneur. And when I did this, apparently they have web crawlers or, you know, some kind of software where they are able to find out anytime anyone is pursuing a uh, trademark with anything using this word. And so a lawsuit ensued when I didn't agree to change the name and stop using um, the word because my brand was built around obviously the word unstoppable, my whole brand, my identity, my company, my flagship program, thousands of pieces of content, the list goes on and on and on. When I didn't immediately agree um, to change the name of my organization, my assets, my programs, all of those things, um, they then uh, filed even more charges and began to subpoena me, began to, um, you know, subpoena my clients. Um, I lost lots of great clients over it. I, you know, definitely lost years of my life. Um, I lost uh, the identity of my brand. It caused so much heartache and turmoil and loss in my life. I can't even put it into words. Um, I didn't sleep for, gosh, I mean, I want to say close to a year. Um, it was certainly the, the hardest and worst year of my life. I struggled immensely with the weight and the stress of what was happening in my company that was growing dramatically at the time and managing that with this at the same time I was in you know, just this horrible, debilitating uh, state of uh, fear and anxiety uh, as they came after me, they went after my clients. Um, and basically in so many words, essentially in, in their own legal jargon, um, let my legal team know that they were either going to get me to change the name or they were basically going to take me out of business. Um, I don't have the exact words or phrases that were used, um, but the best way I can describe it is that what my lawyer said to me uh, was that essentially it was called legal blackmail. Um, it was basically we will take you out of business. Um, you know, we'll put a six person legal team on it, whatever the case, or you're going to lose your brand, lose your identity, um, you know, all of these things. This was uh, a very transformative period in my life because I basically lost the identity and lost a, a lot of what I had built, um, what I had spent, you know, the better part of a decade building. In going through this process, this um, period of time under this duress, I had to rethink everything, right? Uh, I certainly became a completely different person. And it was the first time in my life that I was not able to outwork the situation that I was in. Meaning any other time that I had a hardship or a challenge uh, in my life, I could work my way out of it. I could, I could rely on hard work and I could work my way out of it. And this was the first situation where I was thrashing and trying everything I knew how and, and giving every ounce of my being to, uh, you know, try to uh, work my way out of this. And there was no working my way out of this. It, it was what it was. It was bigger than me. Um, and in going through this, I really rediscovered my faith in a completely new and different way. And I believe that this came into my life to lead me 
to putting God at the center of my life, at the center of my business, uh, to really reframe my entire vision and mission and, and goal as a leader, as a business leader and entrepreneur. You know, prior to all of this happening, when I thought about my mission as an entrepreneur, uh, it was very much tied to helping people grow successful businesses. And it was very much tied to that, that one key thing. How do I help people achieve freedom and make money and do work that they love uh, growing their business? And when I came out the other side of this, I, I realized a couple of things. Number one, I realized that building my personal brand is the the highest and best use of my time and my energy and my focus because that is me, the human, uh, creating a legacy body of work that I'm going to leave behind and that I'm going to use to to impact others in a meaningful way. Number two, I realized that in order for me to fill the mission and the purpose that God instilled in me and my reason for being here, that I was not going to do that through one company. I was not going to do that through one mechanism of business coaching, for example, that just so happens to be a vehicle, the vehicle that I started with, but that there was going to be a lot of different ways that I was going to touch people and reach people and serve people in order to help draw um, them to their highest calling and potential and to have success in business and in life. And number three, I realized that really my, my highest calling above all else is to lead people back to God and to start openly expressing my faith and openly sharing my faith journey and openly having conversations like this one, for example, where I was forced to surrender I didn't willingly choose to make faith the center of my life. I didn't willingly go to God. Uh, I went to God in a moment of despair uh, where there was no other option. I literally would, would pray on my walk, walk every single day to not have a heart attack and die because the stress was so bad because of the combination of many things that were happening in my own company and then dealing with this on top of it that led me to realizing my ultimate purpose which is so much greater than for example building a coaching company right my my greater purpose is to be a leader that helps people to prioritize faith and family and to also do fulfilling work that matters in the world and to do that work in a way that can both make them money and allow them to do good and allow them to prioritize their faith and their family above all else. And as a byproduct of doing fulfilling work that allows them to make money and do good, achieving financial freedom, right? Achieving the freedom of choice, achieving, you know, all of those other elements that we want as a byproduct of doing our best work and living our highest calling.